Mouse trailers, historically useless, but nonetheless fun for some and miserable for others. If you're still here after seven seconds, I'm going to assume you're the former and want to know how to create this one, inspired by Minopo Saigon, which is a little more intelligent than you might expect. The journey to our mouse trailer will begin with a div. Let's give it a size and background color, round the corners, and set the position to fixed so it doesn't interfere with any other elements on the screen. We'll zero out the starting point and set the Z index really high so it's always the topmost element on the screen. We want the pointer event set to none so our clicks and hovers pass through to the content underneath. We'll hide the trailer by default with an opacity of zero and then transition it to one when the mouse enters the screen. In our JavaScript, we can retrieve our trailer element and store it in a variable. We'll listen for any mouse movements and grab the corresponding X and Y positions. Since we want our mouse trailer to be centered when it stops, we can offset these positions by half the width and height of our trailer. Now, it would be easy enough to simply translate the trailer's position to the mouse's position, but that seems rather boring. Instead, it would be more interesting if our mouse trailer actually lagged behind by a short distance. If you've ever discovered the native animation API, like I did just the other day, you already know that we can easily animate any element on the screen by calling the .animate function on the element that you've selected. Let's take that same translation that we just did and add it to a keyframes object. We'll pass it in as the first argument and use the second options parameter to set a duration of 1000 milliseconds. By default, when our animation completes, our trailer will revert back to the state it was in prior to the animation beginning. But we can override this behavior by telling the animation to instead retain the state reached at the end. Now we have an annoying little circle following our cursor around, but if I'm being honest, it's still pretty dumb. Let's see if we can smarten it up a bit. To better demonstrate what's happening, why don't we first add some content that we can interact with? How about a couple of divs with background images sourced from Unsplash? We'll center them on the screen and give them a neat effect on hover so we can tell when they're being interacted with. What we'd ideally like to happen is for our trailer to give us some information about the type of content we're hovering over. We can achieve this in the form of an icon at its center. Let's add an icon element inside of our trailer and default it to an upward pointing arrow sourced from Fawn Awesome. Back in our mouse move listener, let's move the animation logic to its own function. We can determine whether or not our mouse is currently inside of an interactable element by calling the closest function on our event target, which searches back up the DOM tree to find a reference to an element with a given class. If this element exists, we can be certain a relevant interaction is occurring. We can pass this boolean into our animation function and use it to modify the scale of our trailer accordingly. Let's add a data type attribute on each of our interactable elements and then use them to determine the appropriate icon for our trailer. When the interacting boolean is set to true, we can update the icon class using a switch statement, defaulting to a link icon if there are no other matches. Our trailer can now tell us what the content type is, but you'll notice our icon is still present even when our mouse moves away. To fix this, we can set another custom data attribute on our trailer that matches the value set on our interactables. Now in our styles, we have a way to modify our icon opacity based on whether or not this data type value is set. So what do you think? Is our mouse trailer incredibly useful or the worst thing to ever exist? Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.